jump from the gun shop and I'm here today to talk about the difference between this, the side-by-side -side shotgun, and this, the over and under shotgun. First, let's actually have a look at the physical makeup of these things and see how they differ. First, let's compare the stocks. So, as you can see, the side-by-side -side has what we call a straight-hand stock with no pistol grip, and the over and under has a pistol grip. Obviously, these two things are interchangeable, uh, so with side-by-sides you can get pistol grip stocks, and with over and unders you can get straight-hand stocks, but for the most part, these are the two common styles for each gun. If we have a look on the back, you'll notice that the over and under has a butt plate and the side by side has a wooden checkered butt. Uh, this is because the over and under is held on with a stock bolt that comes all the way from the back to about here where it is bolted on. And the, over, and the side by side, generally speaking, again is held on by the action with some pins that actually head, come through the actual head of the stock there and hold it all together. As such, you end up with a much stronger piece of timber at the back than perhaps you would hear, however nobody ever broke one of these stocks. It's just a bit hollow by comparison to that. So, moving on. Triggers. Over and under is generally made for a single trigger action, whereas side by sides generally will be double trigger. Again, these things are interchangeable, but a mass generalisation, the side by side will have twin triggers and an over and under will have a single trigger. Double triggers generally you'll end up with a much crisper trigger break and more consistent because each trigger works on a single sear as opposed to having a changeover or anything sort of anything like that. Whereas a single trigger does have a changeover so you might get different trigger pulls for different for the first or second pull and then with the selector on top you might find it differs when you actually move it each way. With a side by side generally always have an auto safety whereas over and unders because of the amount of sporting guns or sporters as they are called around for clays, they um, you know have a manual safety. So there is another little difference. Over and under generally will be ejector, whereas side by sides there is a lot more non ejectors about. This is firstly because you know side by sides have been around since ejectors didn't exist, and also there was a lot of budget side by sides around at the time that didn't need ejectors. Whereas over and unders is an ejector as standard. However, more modern ones do have the option to turn ejectors off for competition use. Size. This action is a lot deeper than this. Obviously the barrels like this need less to actually fit into the action. There's a little lump on the bottom that fits in. And the over and under has the full barrel setup falling into the action here. This makes the whole thing a lot deeper. This also though allows it to have this big deep fore end as opposed to this splinter style fore end. You can get beaver tail fore ends on side by sides but they are a little bit more uncommon. This over and under has a schnabel fore end but whichever the front or design you get some big beaver tail fat ones but this is a fairly common schnabel fore end Nice, deep, really easy to hold. As you can see, this has a big flat rib running along the top, which is actually fairly uncommon in a side-by-side, -side, whereas the side-by-side -side has more of an actual rib that it just lays the barrels together, so it allows for a more natural sight plane, as opposed to the over and under, which allows for more of an aimed sight plane. Finally, if we have a look at the end of the guns here, you'll notice that the over and under is a multi-choke and the side by side is a fixed choke. Uh, not many side by sides have multi-choke but this is because back then all the barrels were sort of handmade, they didn't have the option for multi-chokes and they weren't a necessity. They're not particularly a necessity in over and unders but it is a lot easier to make a well choked multi-choke than it is to make a proper fixed choke gun. As you can notice when they're both side by side here is that the side by side actually opens far less than the over and under. Obviously this is because you don't have to load the bottom barrel as you would with an over and under, but this can mean slightly faster reloading. However, this also does mean because you don't have quite the travel of the barrel to cock the gun, the cocking can be a little bit stiffer on a side by side than on an over and under. So we have established that both of these things are very, very different. Um, so why one or the other? The over and under in recent years has become vastly more popular, vastly more popular. This is because you've got that nice open plane sight and it's actually very easy for people to learn to understand lead. You know, to be able to actually calculate and shoot maintained lead, which is very hard with a side by side. Also now most people start shooting clays as opposed to in the olden days when they'd walk up hedgerows and start by shooting a couple of pigeons with their old man, a little side by side 410. People now start with clays and over and under is the best tool for clays not a side by side. So this is why these are. This is because they're heavier, less recoil, much more consistent with that big grip on the forehand. You can consistently grip it without getting hot barrels. They're heavier, you get less kick. The pistol grip certainly helps, as well as the ability to actually use that sight plane to calculate lead and shoot certain targets 
consistently and repeatably, which is what these are built for. This gun is sort of built for a much more traditional method of shooting where you sort of go bum, belly, beat, bang, and all in a very quick bang, stab it out the air motion. Much faster, much more agile, and for something like walked up game, you've got to take one of these. They're so much faster to be able to just get on and shoot. However, to make the transition from a double trigger or a single trigger to a double trigger is quite difficult for, for some, especially if you shoot your single trigger vastly more often. Personally, I think it's vastly faster because you get to go click, click, or you can go click, click, and you get the barrel selector much quicker. Plus, if you get a misfire, you just drop your finger back and you've got the bang. There's no awkward having to click, click to sort of change your, your barrel over. You just go bang, bang, and move your finger between the barrels very easily. We like that. Unfortunately, they are harder to shoot. Where they have this unnatural sight plane, they do rely a lot more on gun fits, which people don't put so much faith in nowadays. They buy a gun and it's there, they just go and use it. I understand that if both guns fit, they should be able to shoot equally as well. However, one of these where you don't have the ability to use that bead as a point of reference particularly is harder. You have to rely on gun fit and rely on your natural instinct to push through and pull the trigger and no lead as opposed to be able to calculate it in your head. This is hard for some people, um, including myself, I shoot maintained lead but then I pick up a cyber side and I shoot it completely different, completely different. They're so different in, in the way they shoot and the way they handle and the way they fit, they're not worth comparing. However, if you're buying your first gun, unless you're doing a lot of game shooting, I've got to say buy an over and under. You can use it for absolutely everything you can learn a lot easier with it. You know, when someone says give it five foot of lead, you can see five foot of lead because you've got that parallel rib. Which is one of these, seeing five foot of lead consistently is a lot harder. A lot harder, although possible. Uh, what I will say for side by sides is they are the most stylish guns on the market. If you're after a shotgun to look stylish with, especially if you're driven game shooting, it doesn't matter what you shoot and what you hit with one of these because you just look absolutely perfect. The true line pulling up and through a gun, or pulling up and through a bird, is one of those beautiful things going with one of these. Whereas Nova Nunder is a little bit more clunky, certainly looking, it's a little bit more disorganized, whereas one of these looks absolutely stunning. Obviously they kick more, they're harder to shoot, but it's a bit like owning an Italian car. You know it's not the best thing to do the job that it's for, but you just can't help but love it. Last but not least, from a financial perspective, side-by-sides, because of their lack of popularity, are very, very reasonably priced. You can get a hand-built gun that's 100 years old for less than £1,000 that is absolutely lovely and will shoot fantastically. Whereas, you know, in the over and under market, because of their popularity, they hold such great value. Certainly worth considering when you're looking at buying guns. However, if you're going to be shooting the majority clays, unless you don't care about your scores and you're just there for enjoyment, it's got to be the over and under. That said, you can't live without one of these in your cabinet. They're so beautiful and they're just so elegant in everything they do. <sighs> Go and shoot one if you don't believe me and see how you get on. However, don't shoot a cheap nasty one. That's a mistake. Try and find something English, probably interwar period, certainly nice best quality and go shoot that. Make sure it's not being re-sleeved, re, re original condition. And believe me, you will enjoy nothing else more than that. I remember an old friend of mine telling me that if we were supposed to shoot over and unders, God would have put our eyes like this. Take that as you will.